Are your agile retrospectives feeling stale and unproductive? If so, it's possible that you as the Scrum Master or the team coach are making one of the three mistakes that I will discuss in this video. We can complain all we want about Scrum, but it's thanks to it that today, one of the most famous practices for team performance is the agile retrospective. Yet, if you coached an agile team for a long enough period of time, I bet you had your team feel or even tell you that retrospectives are not that useful or that they are not interested in it. Maybe like me, you heard a bunch of developers come to you and say, yeah, we want to work with you. Just don't do that kumbaya thing. While it's easy to just blame the developers thinking they just don't understand the retrospective spirit, I invite you to put yourself in their shoes. If they are pressed for time and time is money, that meeting called the retrospective better have the best ROI possible for people to want to attend it. And the simple truth is that there are ingredients that make it or break it in the case of retrospectives. And if you want to figure out which of the three issues I will discuss today is most likely impacting your retrospective, stick to the end of this video where I will have a resource waiting for you. Before we dive into the three mistakes, let's just get a quick step back to level set on retrospectives. While most people know retrospectives thanks to frameworks like Scrum and SAFE, these frameworks don't own or did not even invent the retrospective. In fact, people doing extreme programming, which started in the late 1990s, were already doing retrospectives at the end of their iterations and at the end of releases. And then came the Agile Manifesto. And remember, Agile is very inspired on Lean and they posited what we think is the insight that might maybe have fully originated retrospectives when they say in the Agile Principle number 12 that at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective, then tunes in and adjust its behaviors accordingly. But like I said, even then, the idea behind the retrospective is not new. It was inspired by the notion of continuous improvement that you can find in much older schools of thought for management and for product delivery, as in lean and in systems thinking. And I could mention here theory of constraints and Kaizen and PDCA and Six Sigma. And if you're interested in a comparison of these um, styles and approaches for continuous improvement and how they fare against each other, let me know. I'll create an, its own video with that. So let me know in the comments. But putting it simply, despite having many different flavors, continuous improvement is an incremental cycle of improvement to products, to services, to processes. If you were at a certain stage of performance, now you want to get to the next, whatever that might look like. In agile retrospectives are simply just the most famous agile practice that represents that today. So picture a meeting where people join in to talk about what needs to be improved and how. As you can imagine, or you know by experience, a lot of things can go wrong. Listing all these things, however, would bring them to you know a hundred of items. So to keep this organized and make things easier for you, I've put those mistakes in three categories of mistakes that you were making while you're running Agile retrospectives. And they are the bulk, I promise you, of what make your retrospectives ineffective and unappealing to your teams. And these three mistakes are not enabling actionable insights, letting retrospectives run as loose chats somehow, and not fostering a space for productive exchanges. Let's look at the first one. Any conversation, unless you're with a friend or at a bar, should start with an end in mind when it's at work. So the end game for a retrospective is the improvement for the team, a meaningful, concrete change in the way they do things. So when you don't have a goal or you just sift through the little things and annoyances that happen in your sprint, chances are that you are talking about anything and everything, and you'll end up lacking truly actionable items for your retrospective. And without those clearly 
achievable action items, your team might struggle to make progress and to see tangible results moving forward because it will feel like constantly firefighting or venting. And it feels like the improvement itself is a target that changes every single day. The second problem is that you are not structuring your retrospectives. While you don't want retrospectives to feel constrained and dull, there is something to be said about the need for a structure to run retrospectives as meetings so that it's not simply a broad conversation that may or may not generate insights. A great retrospective has a structure. That code has already been cracked for you. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And in an upcoming video, we will do a deeper dive on it. So if you haven't already, subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you know when it's up. Let's put it this way. The structure in a retrospective is helpful for the team and for you as the facilitator as well. With structure, people come to expect what happens and why it happens. You get to promote a sense of organization, productivity, and allowing for a more clear communication among the team members. You're gonna give yourself solid points to intervene when things go off track, like when people are dominating a discussion or avoiding ramblings. And that leads me to the third mistake that you're making, which is not acting as a facilitator. A facilitator is an active participant. Maybe you're shying away, you're not very comfortable with your facilitation skills. Maybe because a retrospective lacked the goal and because you didn't have a structure, now you have to pull in too much weight in keeping the retrospective on track. Without proper human intervention, so much dysfunction can take place. You might have people playing the blame game instead of collaborating on problem solving. You might have a lack of what we call a safe space, which is where people get to be as honest as possible in their contribution so that we can pursue the very best alternative. Without a safe space, valuable insights and improvements might simply just go unnoticed. Whether you are new to retrospectives or not, these three categories of mistakes are really common. I've made each and every single one for the longest time, and most Scrum Masters and coaches will do them and, and managers of teams and etc. So no shame in any of it. You know, the wonderful Maya Angelou once said, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, you do better. So now then the question is, how do you fix those mistakes? I wanna be very clear that there is no simple fix. And as you can imagine, this video could be hours long and to you know cover each and every category of mistake if we were to go deeper. But I'm gonna give you the bug to start figuring out in your case what that can mean. We'll scratch the surface of solutions and in future videos, I will give you also more material to continue to investigate these mistakes. So the simple general idea for today is, if you haven't already, you make sure you will never run agile retrospectives that don't have a goal. If you can't find a goal, you need to seriously ask yourself and the team why that is. Effective agile retrospectives are a tool for improvement and improvement is achieved towards a goal, a meaningful, tangible, measurable goal a goal that is agreed upon and helping the team to filter through the noise of everything else that could also be better, but is not as important now and in the near future as the goal that you selected. It's really something to cut through the noise. The second thing you wanna make sure is that way before people enter that room virtually or physically, your retrospective must be anchored on a structure, a sequence of events that help people go from ground rules to broad thinking to analytical to decision-making and commitment. In a way, a retrospective is almost like a planning moment with options, with prioritizations, with saying no to things, just like a planning meeting except that what you're planning for is the so-called improvement. And I know I use the word meeting a lot, but the most interesting thing I think you can use to rethink retrospectives is to consider it a process. And that will make your life easier in case you need to run them online and in case you need to run them asynchronously as well. Lastly, you can't just be a scarecrow static in a corner of the room or a cheerleader during your retrospective. You 
have an active part to play as a facilitator. You are responsible for helping people to understand and follow the flow of the retrospective. You have a strong influence in making people participate more or less in the case of those people that take all the space they can get. Your facilitation means that you know different ways to make people engage in direct and in respectful conversations, navigate disagreements and, and conflict, and these naturally will arise. That is not inherently bad, and it's in fact very normal. So your role is a very active, human-centered role to play. Successful retrospectives will make people want to exchange their views and know that they are not being penalized for disagreeing or for sometimes offering some unpopular opinions. So these are the three most common categories of mistakes that you're probably making with your Agile retrospectives. And that's probably why your team might be getting less than ideal results with it. Now, trying to solve all of the three categories of problems at once is probably not the smartest strategy. So pick one to improve. Do the homework just like your teams would do. You want to investigate and notice which of these three seems to be more ripe for improvement in your case. And to help you with that, I have a quick questionnaire and guide to help you figure out where to go next. And the link for that resource is in the description down below, together with the blog post that goes along with this video. So you can just bookmark the whole thing for later. Whatever the results of your investigation, just know this, it's all fixable. Maybe you need to create better structures for uh, your retrospectives. Maybe you need to grow your facilitation skill. Maybe it's as simple as focusing on that goal. It doesn't matter, it's all fixable. And in the next video, we will talk more about the first actionable part, which is how to go about selecting a meaningful goal for a retrospective. If you want to refresh on the Agile principle number 12, the one that talks about continuous improvement, that is the one right here. 